Hello, folks. Uh, good morning to those of you on the west coast of the states, and good afternoon and good evening to those of you who are in other places. Uh, this is Holly from the Drupal Association, and we're going to get started with our supporter call update in just a couple of minutes. I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up that we'll, we'll switch over shortly, but uh, thanks for your patience in the meantime, and we'll talk to you in just a couple. Joe, Godfrey, Bill, Carrie, just wants to know I unmuted you live, but there we go. Joe and Josh. There we go. Joe and Josh and Rachel and Carrie, just let you guys know I open up your line so that um, you can control when you're muted and when you're not on your own um, as we go through the agenda. You should Great. be able to mute yourself if you have background noise now. Okay. And I think we're ready to go. Anything else this year, or do you think we're ready to go also? I think we're good. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us today for the Supporting Partners call for the second quarter of 2015. I don't know how we got here. I don't remember having a first quarter. <laughs> but here we are. Um, so again, my name is Holly Ross. I'm the executive director over at the Drupal Association. Um, and I just want to thank all of you for, for being here um, and for your support, the association and Drupal and, and everything that we do. Um, let's just uh, walk through a couple of housekeeping um, announcements and then we'll, we'll get to some of our content for the day. So a uh, couple of things. Um, if you are listening from your computer, um, in your audio controls, uh, you should have mic and speakers there. Um, go ahead and make sure that mic and speakers is selected as the audio um, so that you can hear everything. Um, but also, if you have a question and, and we're able to unmute you later, um, that's the way we're going to be able to hear you. Um, but during the call, you guys are all muted. Um, we're going to keep it that way just to keep the background noise to minimum, but we definitely do want to hear from you. So you should have in your control panel a questions section. So feel free at any time to go ahead and throw your questions in there, um, and I'll be keeping an eye out and uh, fielding those as they come up. So go ahead and use that questions feature, and uh, that way we can answer anything that uh, you guys are thinking about. Um, and then also, you know, hear anything interesting uh, today that you want to share, feel free. Um, we're at uh, DrupalSOS on Twitter. Uh, feel free to use that Twitter handle um, and uh, share what you're hearing today. But uh, mostly just thanks for being here. Um, also want to remind you that uh, we have a couple of things coming up uh, in on the agenda here for the association. Obviously, we hope we'll see all of you at DrupalCon Barcelona. That's uh, from the 21st to the 25th of September. And uh, early bird pricing for Barcelona does end on Friday, so go get your tickets. Go get them right now. Um, make sure that you've got, uh, got your staff booked for that. Um, Global Training Days is coming up on the 21st to the 22nd of August. Um, depending on where you are in the world. <laughs> it's on one of those days. Um, and if you are interested in holding a training, um, you can check out uh, the details and sign up at drupal.org forward slash learn hyphen Drupal. Uh, and then we are all really excited that in 2016, in February, we will be holding DrupalCon Asia in India. So that'll be our, our next con coming up after Barcelona. Uh, if you're interested in uh, helping uh, sponsor or attend that DrupalCon, definitely reach out to the team here and we'd be happy to talk to you about uh, what we're doing there, but we're really excited about that one. So that's what's coming up for us. Um, what we're going to talk about today is just some of the, the news coming out of the association. 
some Drupal.org improvements that have been made in the last quarter, uh, sharing some news about new advertising programs that we've launched on Drupal.org, uh, Drupal Jobs, and how we're marketing Drupal. So we'll cover some of that for the last quarter. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick us off uh, just by saying thank you to our first signature supporting partner coming in at the highest level of support. Uh, Wonderkraut uh, just became that first uh, first signature tier supporter for the association, and we're just really excited to have them on board at that level and, and showing their support for the work that we're doing uh, with the community. For, for Drupal. So thank you so much to Wunderkraut. Um, I have lots of wonderful um, uh, puns, but they're not that good. Joe's better at puns, so maybe when we hand it over to him, he'll have some puns for us. <laughs> but that, that's really exciting news. Um, and of course, we're really thrilled that so many companies across the Drupal universe all around the globe are supporting the Drupal Association and the Drupal Project. Um, we have lots and lots of folks who are part of our supporter programs, whether that's uh, Drupal shops in the supporting partner programs or technology supporters who um, are, um, you know, not necessarily Drupal shops, but they have complementary technology products. Um, and then, of course, our hosting supporters uh, as well who do so much for us. So thanks to all of our supporting partners. And just wanted to share with you um, some of the faces that you can find around the Drupal Association that, that are new. Um, so first we have Mark Grandsetter. Um, so he's a new account manager for technology and hosting partners. So if you are one of those technology or hosting companies uh, and you haven't yet heard from Mark, uh, you should soon. Uh, or definitely feel free to reach out um, and talk to Mark. Um, he can help you find out what's going on at the association and all the ways you can support the Drupal work. Um, and then we're really excited because uh, just a, a couple blocks up the street from, from the Drupal Association office is a, an exciting um, technology training company called Epicotus. Um, and uh, Joaquin from Metal Toad, uh, one of the shops here in Portland, did a great job of convincing them that they had to do a Drupal training. Um, so they did. They put together, I think it was a 15-week course uh, for Drupal, Java, and other related technologies. Um, and uh, those students then are, have been placed um, all over the U.S. in internships. Um, and ThinkShout uh, has been a great partner uh, with the association um, and are helping to sponsor two of those interns here. So uh, just join us in welcoming Daniel Toder and Boyana Skerich, uh, who are interning here at the association. Um, and uh, at ThinkShout over the next uh, next few weeks, so we're excited to have them on board as well. And we're just really excited to see more Drupalistas being put out into the world. So if you haven't heard of Epicotus, they might be worth uh, checking out if you're looking for Drupal talent. Um, they're going to be doing another course, and we'll have more interns to put out into the world shortly. So, excellent. So those are some of our, our new faces. Um, and now I'd like to get into some of the other uh, exciting stuff that's happening around the uh, association. So I'm going to turn things over to Rachel Friesen, uh, who's our events manager. Um, Rachel, you want to give us a little bit of a Drupalcon wrap? Great. Thanks, Holly. We had a great turnout for Drupalcon Los Angeles. So we had about 3,100, 3,200 people show up, uh, which is about where we were with Austin, just slightly under. And uh, what was most exciting was we maintained our high level of sprint turnout. So we had 442 attendees come out to the sprints to kind of keep pushing uh, D8 forward. And what was kind of completely thrilling was to see that we totally ran out of room in the first time sprint workshop. So we had a ton of people showing up, uh, eager to learn how to contribute. And uh, we're actually looking at possible ways of either running the workshop multiple times at future cons or finding ways to keep people coming in um, and learning how to contribute. Uh, additionally, our extended sprint spaces and the, the, the coder lounges on site were really well received. And we had 84 commits during the week, so that was really great. Um, from a programming standpoint, we had a couple new uh, programming features. We had our first time attendee social. One thing that we'd heard in the past in, in uh, attendee feedback was that it's a little intimidating going to your Drupal, first DrupalCon. Uh, so we created this social hour that was really intended to get people to kind of uh, meet a couple new faces, um, have some of their early DrupalCon questions answered. What is a boff? You know, where, where are the program or where are the tracks at? Um, and so that was a really, really well-received uh, event that had a pretty high turnout. So we're definitely going to keep that going forward and, and possibly look at ways of kind of tuning up even more what we can do with that event. 
Um, also, we had a new summit this year. We had a higher ed summit, which was great. It was um, sold out and then sold out again. We ended up increasing the headcount, and then we even had a few crashers show up on site that we had to kind of manage at the door. Um, so that was really encouraging that um, some of those vertical summits um, could be a really great way to, to bring the community together. And then the little sneak peek, so um, at the August uh, public board meeting, we'll be going over all of the data and um, financials from DrupalCon Los Angeles, but our highest attended session was better tools for content creators, and our highest ranked session was creating a culture of empowerment. Uh, so thanks to all of you for um, coming out to DrupalCon Los Angeles, for sponsoring, sponsoring DrupalCon Los Angeles, and, and just continuing to promote the, uh, the great work that the Drupal community is doing. Thanks, Rachel. And we do have one question um, from the call. Uh, I'm going to read this verbatim. Fascinating. I'm sure that's how Chris was saying it. Fascinating. <laughs> what does it mean that the highest rated and, and attended sessions don't really have anything to do with Drupal development? Creating culture and empowerment and better tools for content creation. You know, I think one of the interesting things about our community is that it's diverse, right? So there's people that have a variety of interests. And, um, you know, we got a really lot of really great feedback about Whitney Hess's keynote, which is, you know, about kind of other <laughs> other aspects within the, the tech world. But um, I think that people are hungry for content that not is not only just kind of, you know, developer focus, but things that developers are also, you know, influenced by. So I think that's something that we're actually, we, we got a lot of feedback about the sessions and content from Los Angeles. And so um, our team internally and also working with kind of our global um, leads and track chairs and things like that, we're, we're all looking at ways to just continue to refine the, the content that we provide at, at DrupalCon LA or excuse me, at DrupalCon, and the great thing is, is it's all community provided and community um, uh, selected, so we have community members that pick the sessions that get to present. So um, it's kind of interesting to see what resonates and how that changes over time. Yeah, I like to see that the... Um, yeah, I like to see that the, uh, the developers are looking to be, you know, well-rounded, and it's not just about Drupal. I'd be curious to see if we could talk about related technologies more in, at cons as well. Um, but, I, you know, Chris, I'd probably also add um, that, uh, you know, this is where we're at in our product development life cycle as well, right? So there's, there's not a ton more to say <laughs> um, necessarily about Drupal 7, so um, I think that might be part of it too. But, uh, but I agree mostly with Rachel that it's, you know, it's great to see that um, developers have lots of things they want to talk about, not just Drupal. Um, and I think that's great because that just makes you a better overall developer. So awesome. Yeah. And as Rachel mentioned, we will be tackling DrupalCon Los Angeles in depth at the August board meeting. So feel free to sign up to attend that for all of the all of the board details. Um, and we'll be recording that as well so you can always watch the recording or review the materials on your own. All right, so moving on from that, uh, we also want to just give a quick update about Drupal 8 Accelerate. Um, as you, I'm sure, are aware, uh, we launched the fund uh, early this year so that we could positively impact the release date of Drupal 8, uh, in other words, try to speed that up. The goal is to raise $250,000 to be handed out in 2015. Um, and those requests can come from a couple of places. Um, one, uh, the branch maintainers themselves uh, are able to recommend uh, certain kinds of grants. So if they know uh, a certain set of issues need to be prioritized and they fall into the, uh, the wheelhouse of a certain set of developers, they can say, hey, let's give these guys a, a, a grant to get this work done. Uh, also, community can make requests as well. So they can use um, a self-nomination process to say, hey, I would really like to tackle these critical issues. So. Um, both types of processes have been used uh, throughout the program, and we've actually um, made 27 grants so far. Um, about $85,000 has gone out the door. Um, there's uh, That number will bump up in the next couple weeks pretty significantly um, as well. Um, and it's resolved a lot of critical issues. Um, if you go to the link on the page there, um, we have every grant we've awarded listed with the issues that it addressed. <laughs> So it's been, it's been great to see those issues get ticked off. Um, and as you, I, I think, are probably also aware, we're, we're finally really getting into the, the home stretch. Uh, we're in the teens 
uh, in terms of number of uh, issues that are still that are release blockers uh, for us to solve, um, which is great. Um, and the, the D8 program has gotten really pivotal in helping make that happen. Um, just over uh, what was a holiday weekend in the U.S., um, some folks got together in Europe. Some of the uh, key uh, core developers got together in Europe and were able to bring that number down significantly uh, through their work. Um, and and that was really. Uh, exciting to see. Um, and just a couple of examples of kinds of things that have been funded. Um, we got a beta to beta upgrade path uh, through the D8 Accelerate granting process and, and that was huge because now people can actually work on the beta, um, you know, put, put uh, develop a site on a beta and then be able to upgrade it to the next beta without having to redo all of you know, redo everything. Uh, so that that's helping us actually, you know, get more users who are testing the betas. Um, we also uh, have gotten Drupal CI updates um, through this process as well, um, and it's been great to see those um, improvements uh, happen in you know collaboration with the association staff and the volunteers who've managed that for a long time. So uh, we're excited to get that out the door as well. So. Um, lots of great stuff happening around there. Um, we're at about $230,000 $230, raised of our goal, which is pretty amazing. Um, and we'll be doing a push for that publicly just before uh, we get to Barcelona uh, as well to get that last bit of money raised for it. Um, even uh, if we haven't spent all the money by the time that Drupal 8 has a release candidate, um, you know, we're still pledging that money to go towards Drupal 8 development um, and know that the um, team will be able to fund, you know, significant work around um, uh, turning the release candidate into an actual uh, release, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, you know, potentially work on um, helping out with some of the key modules that um, are important to Drupal 8 adoption. So. Lots of good stuff happening there, um, and I know that many of you, in addition to your supporting partner uh, roles, have also kicked in dollars to the Drupal 8 Accelerate um, Fund. Um, I just can't thank you enough for doing that. It has been a, uh, a really important, I think, just wind in the sails for the um, core, core contrib folks um, to, to, to make all this happen. So thanks for that again. All right. Speaking of making things better. Let's uh, let's switch things up um, and let's talk about Drupal.org and what the team has been working on here. And Josh, uh, you want to share what's been going on? You bet. So I have uh, four things that I wanted to call out from the last quarter that I think are, are pretty significant changes to Drupal.org that you all need to be aware of. Uh, first, and this one is the one that I think is going to have the biggest impact for organizations like you. Uh, is issue credits. Uh, these issue credits allow developers who are doing work in the issue queues to attribute their work to the organizations that funded them or gave them the time to do that work. So um, that could be their, their employer, that could be their employer on behalf of a customer, um, that could be as a volunteer on behalf of a nonprofit organization. There's a lot of different ways that developers can give that credit out. And what it does is it begins tallying up um, for every issue that is closed. Uh, we tally that up and show it on your user or org profile. And so uh, one of the things I wanted to call out in this, in this is just make sure that your developers are attributing their work if it's appropriate. Um, and then also most of you probably have some uh, issue credits showing up on your organization profile. So um, go ahead and, and check that. Right now we're showing the last 90 days worth of issue credits on the profiles. And uh, our hope is in the next few weeks we're going to be styling that up, making it uh, look a little bit sharper, um, and really trying to, to highlight the organizations that are doing the most for the Drupal ecosystem. Um, eventually what this is going to turn into is one of the key components to an algorithm that determines how organizations are sorted um, in the key views on Drupal.org that, that show the um, that show the organizations working in Drupal. So a good example of this might be the marketplace uh, being listed, instead of by alphabetical, uh, being listed by the organizations with the most issue credits and the ones that give the most back to the community through things like sponsoring um, a DrupalCon or uh, being a supporting partner or uh, running a camp. Uh, we're looking at all the ways that organizations can help make that ecosystem better. So if you haven't uh, really gotten your developers down the path of issue credits, uh, let them know about it so that uh, they can start uh, 
um, attributing their work in that way. Um, the other thing that's uh, big right now. Hey, Josh. That um, I would. Hey, Josh. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. One one question about that that came in. Um, so uh, Chris wants to know: Can the credits be applied retroactively uh, if someone forgets at the time of the actual commit? Can they can they go back and do it? Um. Our focus right now is on recent credits going forward. Um, and because we're showing on organizations, we're showing the last 90 days instead of the full history of credits, uh, the goal is to, to really have a focus on who's contributing now uh, rather than historical contribution. We may look at uh, whenever we're doing, we're going to do a process where we do um, importing of all the commit history that's in, in Git. Um, and getting individual credits out of that that get pulled in. Um, but I think what we're going to end up seeing is it's, it's really going to be focused in terms of how we display it and how we highlight it. It's going to be focused on what is the recent activity of that organization or user. And we may play around with it a little bit. I don't know if 90 days is quite enough. Um, it may get closer to like six months. What's the last six months look like? Because I know a lot of uh, organizations are able to cyclically contribute to camps and things like that, and we want to be able to, to highlight that as well. So um, at, at this time, we're not really focused on doing backdated information and pulling that in. Um, but if we figure out a good way to do it, we will certainly let you folks know so that uh, you can um, work with us to, to try to pull in some, some back commit um, and, and back involvement as it relates to uh, contributed code and review and that sort of thing. Excellent. I think the question was just a little bit different, though, and that is, so, like, let's say at the time of the commit, you forgot to add attribution in the right way, and then a day later, you're like, oh, right, attribution. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you add a comment to an issue, um, at any point that someone adds a comment in, um, they're adding attribution for their organization or have the opportunity to add attribution for the organization. And it doesn't trigger as an issue credit until a maintainer of the project um, actually saves the state of the, the issue um, and changes it over to closed. Um, so it's, it's perfectly possible to, you know, kind of pick up a credit um, a day or so after. Um, just be, uh, be polite and don't... Uh, don't have your developers just go through and add plus one for uh, for credit uh, to, to every issue they're working on. But as long as it's a, a meaningful comment back to the issue queue, um, that can be picked up after the fact. All right. And, okay, and I don't see the questions, more, Holly, so if there are any other left, others, let me know. Yeah, one more. Where on the org profile? Can folks see this? Did you meet yourself, Josh? <laughs> we lost Josh. <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay, hang on. He got muted, but now he is unmuted. Josh, you're back. Apologies for that. I got uh, bumped off the, the call for a second. It basically lost audio and at the same time kind of kicked me off. Could you repeat that last question? Because I, I didn't hear, uh, I didn't yeah. know what you said. Ironically, yeah, no I'm, I'm sitting like 20 feet from Holly, but I'm behind a wall, so. I know, it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, the question was where on our profile, uh, where on the org profile will you see the issue credits? Right now, it's uh, showing up just below uh, the org description. So uh, if, you, if you look on your profile, it's towards the bottom of the page. We're going to be styling those to move them up near the top, uh, putting a real emphasis on both individual profiles and organization profiles on objective data that we've collected through Drupal.org rather than user-submitted data that shows up on Drupal.org. And that's, that's a change you can be looking to see in the next couple months. Any other questions? That's it. You're free to carry on. All right. Sweet. Um, so the other big thing that I wanted to, to talk about briefly was the uh, content strategy work. If you haven't had an opportunity to go to uh, um, the DrupalCon LA site and look at the presentations that were done on the content strategy, uh, 
process that we did with Forum One and with community members. Um, I highly recommend watching those particular presentations and kind of reviewing what is going to the changes that are going to be coming down the road for for Drupal.org. Uh, there's some really exciting changes in the content strategy around how we structure content on Drupal.org, how we improve search by by making content types that um, are easier to filter on and facet on in our in our search strategy. Um, and there's some really exciting things about uh, introducing a lot of the functionality that's in groups.drupal.org directly into Drupal.org so that you can begin showing the relationships between users um, and their work in the, the code on the project or in design or in review on the project and their work in organizing and, and doing things in the community by the groups that they belong to. And so there's some uh, really exciting work coming out of that. I highly recommend reviewing that in a little bit more detail um, because it is um, some exciting stuff. Holly, can you do next slide? Yep. Oh, you skipped one. So uh, Drupal CI, Holly mentioned this uh, just a little bit, and I wanted to give a, a, a bit of an update. For those of you who aren't familiar with Drupal CI, CI stands for Continuous Integration. Um, it's the project that basically uh, won out from a community support standpoint. Uh, for doing testing on our, our Drupal code uh, code base. So what happens is every time you commit a patch um, or every time you submit a patch, you can you can run tests against that patch uh, in the issue queues. Uh, this is particularly important for core, where for Drupal 8 we have over 94,000 assertions. These are little tests that have been written by the developers to make sure that we're not introducing regressions into the code base. And those tests are constantly being run against a set of environments that represent the kind of minimum requirements for, for Drupal. So um, right now we, we have uh, Drupal CI working on Drupal.org. It's launched and in production. Um, and it's testing things like combinations of PHP plus MySQL, combinations of SQLite plus MySQL, or I'm sorry, PHP plus SQLite, and combinations of PHP plus Postgres. And this is really important uh, to the community and it's been uh, a really important thing for us to get out so that our core maintainers can get closer to a release candidate with confidence that uh, they're not breaking important parts of the of the system. So um, we were really excited in the in the past month working with community members to kind of shift that into let's get this into production um, and the early review is has been done with core maintainers they're really excited about it we have a couple features that we want to get into place and then we'll be releasing that for contrib projects as well. So um, Drupal CI, a huge example of the community building uh, a really robust solution for testing and uh, then working with uh, the staff here at the Drupal Association that you all are helping fund uh, to get that into production because that, that production piece has, has been um, quite, the, uh, quite the challenge, but uh, the team has been doing some great work on it. Um, one other thing that we did in the last quarter was we, we did a move to prepare ourselves for a much more flexible pre-production environment. So um, right now, whenever someone wants to contribute to Drupal.org and uh, they're, they're not a part of the, the team here at the Drupal Association, we can set them up with a dev environment and they can begin developing on that environment and then create patches and send them off to the team in order to get reviewed and pushed up the chain. Um, those dev environments take about two hours to build. Um, they are a little bit time intensive and we want to make that process better. So um, during the, the last quarter we had this opportunity to move our dev environments over to something that allowed us to scale up and down which is the Amazon Web Services environment um, and it's given us a lot of flexibility to, uh, to begin expanding how we do that. This is really exciting because it, um, it really builds upon the community ethos of people being able to contribute back to the project in the way that they're most passionate about. Uh, and gives an op opportunity to work with us on Drupal.org and the, the related system. So um, that was a big move in Q2 that not a lot of people saw, but uh, is going to have big impact down the road. Um, I also want to briefly, Holly, if you could go ahead and next slide, um, briefly just touch on the roadmap. Um, many of you know that uh, over the over the first few months that I was here at the association, I began working with the working groups to put together what would be the roadmap for Drupal.org. Um, these are the, the key initiatives that we've been worked on. Um, the, 
they've kind of expanded over time. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed is there, are, you know, things like Drupal CI weren't on our roadmap because the community were working on it, but then when it needed to go to production, um, because it was a Drupal 8 blocker, it immediately comes into the roadmap. Uh, we're going to be doing some updates with the working groups over the next two months, uh, refining this list of, of key features that we're working on, making them a little bit more uh, compartmental as well, so it, it's easier for us to mark off when they're done. Um, and you'll be seeing a lot of changes this in the near future. But I, I like to highlight the things that these are the things that the team is focused on improving. And so um, if you're wondering what the Drupal Association staff are, are focused on, these are the key initiatives that we want to tackle. Um, and lastly, if uh, Holly, you want to pop up the next slide, I just want to put out another thank you to all of the supporting partners. Um, it's your generous support that's making this impact on Drupal.org. It's allowing us to, to put new features out there that make our developers faster, that help grow the community, um, that help make sure that we have new developers coming on board and that they're getting the right information, the content, and the right tools to make them better Drupal developers and Drupal contributors. And it's, it's thanks to the support that your companies are providing us. So uh, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And Holly, that's, thanks, that's for my update. Yeah, thanks for that. <clears throat> awesome. So that's what's going on in Drupal.org uh, from the development standpoint. Um, and I know, Josh, your team is um, working so hard. Um, and it's always tough when you have a priority list that then gets you know, added to. So <laughs> you guys have juggled a lot. And I really, I really appreciate that. So um, lots of stuff going on there. Um, and then Carrie. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about what's happening um, in advertising on Drupal.org. Sure. Uh, thanks, Holly. I am going to talk about some of the new advertising products that we created on Drupal.org in Q2, including Try Drupal and a new homepage sponsorship that's about to launch in July. Um, so the association's goal is to create mission-driven revenue programs that help support the community and grow the adoption of Drupal. So, Holly, if you could move to the next slide. Uh, first off, you may have noticed a brand new Try Drupal block on the homepage of Drupal.org, which we launched back in April. Uh, this is a brand new program that we created with our premium hosting supporters to make it easier for CMS evaluators to test and work with Drupal. And prior to launching this program, there's actually no way to do that on Drupal.org, so this is actually a pretty big win. Um, the program showcases a selection of, our, of hosting companies where a user can sign up for a free trial Drupal of, uh, of demo, or excuse me, a tree, free Drupal test site. Um, so we've worked really closely with our partners to make sure that the demo site includes pre-installed modules and themes that will really show off the best of what Drupal can do. And the, the goals of the program are for evaluators to have a simple and positive tri trial of Drupal, but also to highlight and drive leads to our premium hosting supporters. And so far, we've gotten some really great feedback from the partners who launched with us back in April. And we have about four teed up so far, and um, they're getting a lot of leads and um, a lot of uh, good um, signups from the program. And then next up, we are launching a new homepage sponsorship this July that will highlight partners who give back to the community through Drupal supporter programs. So the, the sponsorship will display in the 300 by 250 ad block that already exists on the homepage. And we're going to display the partner's logo, a blurb about the company, the supporter badge, and then eventually we'll be able to pass in any applicable org issue credits that Josh touched on earlier into the sponsorship placement. Um, the program is going to be sold in one week increments, during which the supporter receives 100% of, of uh, impressions, which means no other ads will rotate during that time. It's a very high impact opportunity. It's a really great chance to shoot, showcase new services or product updates because it's going to receive a ton of eyeballs. Um, like I said, the sponsorship will start mid-July and it'll be available through the end of the year. And then also just a quick reminder about some existing programs that we launched in Q2. Um, we launched a dedicated email program. So the association has a list of about 3,000 plus users, and that list is growing as we continue to promote the sign-up, um, who have opted in to receive special offers from our partners. 
and the we will send out an email on behalf of a partner with a dedicated message, meaning it's 100% your message. There's not going to be any other content in the email, um, and it'll include some kind of special offer for our users. Then lastly, we are still offering our audience extension product. Um, I probably touched on this before. Um, this is the program where you can programmatically reach the Drupal.org audience while they're visiting other websites um, through ad networks and exchanges. We've partnered up with a third party called Partner Connect to help us facilitate the campaigns for us. Um, for any of these programs, you can contact your account rep at the association for details or further questions about the programs. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about Drupal jobs. So we're continuing to see a lot more positive growth for the job board. Um, we have over 1,300 active job seeker profiles and over 2,000 job postings since we launched the site back in August of last year. Um, we had a chance to speak to some Drupal Jobs customers at DrupalCon LA. There's a link to their full video testimonials, which you can view later, but just to summarize some of the great feedback we got from them. Um, one partner said that they received 150 applications in 30 days from their job postings. They said that everyone they hired for their positions came through Drupal Jobs versus a similar posting on LinkedIn. And then another partner told us that two featured job postings produced 50 candidates and three hires. And they said that of all the candidate generation tools that they use, they got the best Drupal candidates from Drupal Jobs. So we really love to hear that kind of positive feedback about the site. Um, thanks to Chris at Chromatic and Aaron at Civic Actions for chatting, us, chatting with us and telling us about their experience with Drupal Jobs. And thanks to all the partners who support the association and Drupal Jobs. And that is it for me. Thanks, thanks, Carrie. Yeah, and if you if you folks haven't had a chance to um, to chat with Carrie, Lucina, she's been here since uh, late last year. Um, she's been um, a really great partner in helping us think through uh, how to diversify our revenue streams um, with Drupal.org at the association. Um, that's been hugely important to us for a couple of reasons. First, um, as many of you probably know, the um, the association's primary funding source for a very long time has been the Drupal Cons and um, that is fine, uh, but there's a couple of issues that that raises. One is that, um, you know, if you have all of your financial eggs in one basket, uh, it's uh, not exactly the best uh, risk management strategy. <laughs> so diversifying our revenue, you know, just is a, a safer bet for the organization. But, but mostly why it's important to us is that um, uh, if all of our revenue is, you know, dependent on DrupalCon performance, it means we're not allowed to take risks with DrupalCons or um, make choices that aren't you know, that don't make financial sense, right? Um, so uh, by diversifying our revenue, you know, it just uh, is going to free up the DrupalCon team to be even uh, more um, innovative in what they do in the cons to try new things um, and to really be able to focus on, on the customer um, even more than the, the bottom line, which is great. So that's one goal um, and one thing that Carrie's really been helping us to do, which is great. The other thing that I think um, is really wonderful about this, uh, this whole line of um, services is that um, you know, they definitely generate revenue, but we, we're really excited that these are, you know, these are all very mission-based activities as well. So helping connect job seekers uh, with folks who need to make hires, that helps the Drupal place, workplace, you know, flourish. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that and, and really, really happy to have Drupal jobs out for that reason. Um, the Try Drupal program, um, you know, uh, one of the things that we heard when we did audience, um, we did a lot of audience interviews uh, for a uh, for Drupal.org uh, earlier in. Oh gosh, I guess that was in 2014. Now, um, you know, we heard time and time again that folks just didn't know where to start, or they wanted an easy way to try things. They weren't sure what to do, um, and Try Drupal has really made that uh, very clear on the homepage, and is you know creating real Drupal Drupal users. So, um, sure, it's an advertising program, but it also is a great mission fit. So. Uh, we're really excited about these programs, and, and Carrie, you're doing a, a great job being really thoughtful about what it is that we roll out for the community, so thank you. 
And we did have one other uh, question about the job board, which is how many of the jobs are remote versus on-site? Um, I don't think, Carrie, that we have those statistics off the top of our head, um, but I can tell you that there are a good number of jobs that are, are remote. And so if you do go to jobs.drupal.org, um, you can use some facets to filter down. Um, you can look for jobs that are available anywhere. Uh, anywhere is the, the, sort of the facet you would use to find out how many of those jobs can be done from anywhere. So. People yeah, I would them. guess it's about 20% off the top of my head, but we can share those stats out afterwards. Okay, awesome. Cool. So um, those are uh, those are some of our um, revenue programs from, from Drupal.org, um, and I think we also want to talk about what are we doing because, uh, you know, Drupal 8 is going to come out. How are we going to help support that? So Joe Saylor, our CMO, you want to share some of that news? Sure, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Holly? Yes. You can hear you, Joe. Okay. Thanks. Just want to make sure. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to highlight a couple of pieces of new content that we've uh, published recently. Uh, we have launched a content marketing uh, effort in the last uh, 45 days or so. And uh, the first couple of pieces of content uh, that have come out have been really well received. So we're we're taking a couple of tacks. Uh, one is to highlight the Drup the Drupal ecosystem um, and Drupal as uh, a a luc lucrative business opportunity for um, for all kinds of companies, uh, not just shops and agencies, but also hosting uh, companies and um, software vendors. Uh, that offer complementary software applications and tools, etc. And of course, highlighting the the platform itself. Uh, and uh, as Holly mentioned, we're down in the teens for criticals for Drupal 8, so we're going to be ramping up uh, more efforts to develop content, uh, helping folks prepare for Drupal 8. Uh, so uh, we'll be trying to help not only developers but um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, non-technical folks, uh, content admins, uh, themers, so all types of folks who touch uh, Drupal get ready for uh, Drupal 8, which hopefully will be released soon. Um, also wanted to uh, mention coming soon we'll be uh, releasing a new Drupal jobs uh, a job market survey. Uh, last year, about this time, we released a uh, Drupal job market report uh, that highlighted um, things like uh, market demand for Drupal talent, uh, what kinds of talent folks are looking for, uh, and this year we will plan to ask those same questions so we can compare them year over year with last year's survey. Uh, this year we also plan to introduce salary information, so uh, information about uh, you know how much uh, developers um, uh, are making at various levels, um, and um, you know hopefully that will sort of help um, you know shops and agencies and other businesses you know sort of gauge the market um, on that kind of thing. So uh, keep your eyes out for that survey. It should be coming out in the next two weeks. And uh, if you're not subscribed to our email lists or our social media, that's where we'll be promoting that survey. So um, it's, it's great if you're subscribed to those because that's where you see those, uh, those opportunities. So we're very excited about that. Um, other content coming down the pike, uh, as I mentioned, definitely more Drupal 8 content in the form of papers. Uh, we will be launching a webcast series soon. Uh, that will focus on Drupal 8 and uh, getting various roles uh, ready for the release, uh, things like infographics, etc. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. And um, I mentioned this on last quarter's call, but wanted to highlight it again. We will be exhibiting uh, Drupal at a couple of European events, the the Mexico event in uh, Cologne, Germany, which will be happening September 16th and 17th and Festival of Marketing, which will be happening in London in November. So we'll have a Drupal presence in the exhibitor area, Drupal collateral, uh, case studies, etc. It is a co-marketing model, so we're looking for 
uh, businesses to come in, help uh, fund the booth, and then in return, uh, the companies that fund get a person in the booth and they get to highlight some of their, uh, their own services and case studies inside the booth. And there are still some opportunities for both of those events. So if you're interested in that, uh, please do contact Johanna Bergman. And at the, her email is there. You, you may have her address anyway. But um, uh, definitely contact her. It's, it's going to be a great way to highlight uh, Drupal to um, some of these audiences, digital marketers, uh, CMOs, um, and you know the, these audiences that are sort of at the intersection of IT and marketing, which is definitely a sweet spot for, for Drupal, obviously. And uh, finally, just wanted to uh, highlight again the Drupal newsletter, which uh, we've been publishing now for a couple of months. It is a syndicated uh, version of the weekly drop newsletter, which you may have seen before. Uh, it is starting to gain some great traction. The uh, subscriber numbers are, are really increasing nicely, the open rates, the click-through rates, uh, and it's really encouraging. This is really our technical marketing vehicle for uh, more of a technical audience. So uh, it's really encouraging to see uh, the engagement and um, and things like open rates and, and uh, click-through rates increase on this as well as the subscriber numbers. There is an advertising opportunity in this newsletter. We do not manage that. That's, that's managed through um, Bob Kepford at the Weekly Drop. Uh, but there is an advertising opportunity there as well. Also, if you do um, advertise on Drupal Jobs, uh, there are Drupal Jobs featured in this newsletter as well. So it's sort of an extra uh, push for your, your jobs on Drupal Jobs. And that is it from me, unless there are any questions. No, I think you're in the clear, Joe. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thanks again for for joining us today. Just a couple of uh, a couple more reminders, and I just want to say that um, one of the things I love the most here is um, having conversations with folks in the community. So I really appreciate um, all the ways that uh, folks get in touch with us uh, and start those conversations. So uh, let's just remind you how you can do those things. So um, just uh, you know, tell feel free to tell us what it is that you need and what you're thinking and what you're hearing out in the community. Um, and, and you can do that in a variety of ways. Um, on our site at association.drupal.org, um, we've got a blog uh, where we put news. Uh, so definitely feel free to uh, respond to those those posts um, and, and start a dialogue with us there. Um, we do have the association newsletter, um, which is not a great way to start a conversation, but at least you'll get our news. <laughs> and then um, we also have um, our open public board meetings. Um, and I forgot to update this slide. They're actually on the third Wednesday of each month uh, at noon Pacific. Uh, but on the association site, if you go to the board section, um, you can see the, the upcoming meetings posted there and sign up to attend those. Uh, but again, we also make all those materials available after the meeting, um, also on the board section of the site, including a recording of the board meeting as well. So um, that's where you can get lots of information about what's going on here. Um, our that. Um, and if you have questions about anything that um, uh, you are, uh, you know, anything you've seen here today about how to get more involved, um, your account managers, their email addresses are listed right here. So um, Jenner and um, Mark are focused on our ISV technology hosting partners. Johanna, uh, more focused on shops. Um, but feel free to reach out to anyone. We'll make sure that you talk to the right person um, and, and get what you need. So definitely feel free to reach out. Um, how do you sign up for the newsletter, somebody asked. Um, a couple of different ways to do that. Um, you do it from the association homepage. There is a um, subscribe box. Um, you can also do it right from your Drupal.org profile. That is one of those profile improvements that Josh was talking about. Um, you can um, sign up for the Drupal Association newsletter as well as the weekly drop Drupal newsletter that Joe just referenced. Um, all of those are available in your um, Drupal.org profile as well. So definitely feel free to reach out, uh, keep the conversation going. Just a reminder again, we hope we'll see you in Barcelona at Global Training Days at DrupalCon Asia in India. 
Uh, if you have questions about those, let us know. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you at the next quarterly update, but don't be a stranger till then. And uh, thanks again for your support and for being here today.